What is going on, Governor? It's just cool here, and I think I might have broken rage generation. Uh, I invented something that I'm now calling rage tanking, and we're going to tell you how you can use this to completely smash the expedition, crush things in uh, the Karak ceremony, and totally smash barbarians on the map. If you like Bleeding Edge content, you should totally like and subscribe, because we're going to bring that to you as often as we can, and we are an official Rise of Civilizations community program member, which means we are sponsored by Lilith Games, and we will be bringing you daily updates. So with that said, what the heck is this rage tanking thing? Um, so I realized that certain commanders heal when they use their primary skill. So what if you could generate so much rage that they were using those primary skills every couple seconds, and you were basically chain, like, machine gun healing yourself in combat. And there's a couple commanders that make this really tick. The first is that Lohar, his primary uh, skill, Overwhelming Force, does damage and does a heal. Boudica, her third skill, makes it so that when she does a nuke, she restores rage, which is a part of what we're trying to do, and she heals. Her primary attack is also relevant for tanking because it reduces the rage of the enemy and reduces their attack. Other commanders that are really relevant for this setup include Joan of Arc because Joan of Arc, with her primary skill, can generate 50 rage per second. Now, the thing that really tips all of this over is Lohar's um, talents and Lohar has a support tree. Very few commanders have it. And within the support tree, there is this talent over here called Rejuvenate. Now, Rejuvenate is really fascinating. Within the support tree, this generates 150 rage when a skill is used. Now, that is much better than the exact same talent in the nuking tree, which only generates 60 rage whenever a skill is used. So, what I realized is that if I picked up this Rejuvenate talent, which is restoring rage, and along the way you get burning blood, which is generating rage, and you grab this talent Elixir, which increases the amount of healing that you do by 9%, you grab this talent Counterattack, which makes it so that every time you get healed, you get a 9% damage buff. Um, you can do a lot of really crazy stuff against Barbarians. Now, I also picked up this talent over here, Loose Formation. Um, and I started to be a little bit greedy by grabbing Trophy Hunter because I'm all about getting those resources. Um, I'm currently third in my kingdom for gathering resources. That's a separate idea entirely. Um, but if I wanted to really push the damage, I actually should have gone for this skill, Domination, uh, because it turns out I'm doing a ton of damage by generating all this rage. Now, with that said, if you're running this unit with a combination of low Harbutica, um, then the skill damage is super relevant. Another way you could run this unit, if you are going to be running multiple armies, and this is a good idea if you're doing expedition, um, would be to have CPO in that unit because you could get, I think, 100% uptime on the military life active skill, which reduces damage taken by 25%. Now, most of us are still um, adjusting to the fact that Boudica, or sorry, that uh, Joan of Arc no longer has a 25% damage reduction. But if you had Joan of Arc in a separate army with someone like Boudica with a nuking build as well, they're generating rage, they're giving you um, a ton of rage to that Joan of Arc, and that Joan of Arc is giving rage to Lohar and to Scipio. Like, oh my gosh, the chain gun machining action is going to be insane. So um, why don't I just show you what that looks like? And why I think these combinations can be totally bananas. We're going to send the combination with Lohar and Boudica. And by the way, this is even more insane with Richard I. You, you like barely have any units that are wounded at all by the end of the battle. But we're going to send just Lohar and Boudica. And I want you to see just how quickly the rage generation kicks off and how much the nuking damage ramps up. Because it was shocking to me how high this was. Truly shocking to me. Um, this build, I think, is a really good way to adapt to um, 
the recent changes with Joan of Arc's Saint skill. And you'll see in a second here, the rage generation at this point is normal. And it only gets insane once they start using skills. Now, the first skill is about to go off, which is going to give us 150 additional rage. Then Boudica uses her skill, which is another 150 rage. And all of a sudden, the bar's full again, and they're nuking again. This is what I mean by machine gunning nukes and generating just crazy, insane amounts of rage. Every single time they nuke, they're healing. Every time they heal, they boost their damage. You see where this is going? Um, you could you could specialize this unit to be more tanky. You could specialize this unit to do more damage. Um, my intention is to make a very, very tanky army for the Karak Ceremony and then have other armies that support it um, so that I can take probably, like, I want to get to on hard difficulty, knocking out 80 plus um, of the Karak Ceremony all by myself. So um, you can see here that this is clean. This was a really clean fight. I have almost as many troops as I started with. Um, and if I look at the battle report, um, I, I'm only down a small number of troops here. I'm only down a small number of troops. Um, an even more insane combination would be to use Richard the i I'm going to have a totally separate video showcasing Richard the First. I only have his first skill maxed. Um, but look at this battle report. I, I have only 3,600 units that were not healed at the conclusion of that battle. I started with 156,000 units. I ended with 152,400 units. <laughs> I'm going to send two, two armies because I think it's going to be totally insane. And this time I'm using Richard the First. So my primary army, Lohar, Richard the First. Secondary army is Boudica, Joan of Arc. Because I, I, I just want to show you how crazy insane it's going to be with the additional 50 rage per second coming from Joan of Arc. And it's not chain gunned as fast as it would be if Joan of Arc was in the primary army. Um, but that's totally fine. So here we go. Let's make sure that the tanky army hits first. And now the fun begins. So it's going to take a second for this thing to warm up. It's going to take a second for this thing to warm up and the raid generation to start to get out of hand. I want you to watch these heals on Richard the First. Um, they're going to be in, the, in a, the realm of like 3,000 plus. And now the raid generation and the tankiness is getting in to play from the buffs from Joan of Arc. And, like, look at this thing just melt. Look at this army just totally melt. Wow. And you can see that the Lohar unit, it, are, they, are they taking damage? Like, I'm zoomed in, and the bar looks basically full. <laughs> um, yeah. This seems incredibly strong. Like, incredibly strong. Uh, we'll, look, we'll look at the report in a second here. All right, well, let's look at what happened. So, uh, Boudicca's army is down about 6,000 units, and the army with Richard I <laughs> lost less than 200 units. Less than 200 units are still uh, not in, in there for combat. Some of them are slightly wounded, and some were severely wounded, and they're not still here. Ooh. Okay, okay. One last test I want to do is with Lohar and CPO. And I want to see what that damage reduction looks like. But in order to make that work, you really have to have the second army present. So uh, we've got um, our Boudica with Joan of Arc on the way. And we'll see, like, kind of how tanky you can go in a free to play mode. My CPO is wholly unimpressive the way that I've set him up. So, um, yeah, if it works with my CPO, it'll work with a nicely skilled out CPO for sure. And I didn't time this perfectly against the level 25. That's fine. Um, now, once CPO skill goes off, we should get a 25% damage reduction. 
and a lot of counterattack damage, which is pretty sweet. This is even more powerful of a concept in the expedition when you're getting hit by a lot of units all at the same time. Now we've got that rage generation going from Joan of Arc, and this puts us in a really good situation. Look at that go. Yeah. Um, Lohar's looking pretty good. It doesn't have quite as much healing, and there's a little bit less synergy with the healing-related talents. So if you were going to use CPO in this way, you might not pick up those healing-related talents. I'll show those to you in a second. Um, and we'll look at the battle report once this is done and kind of compare how it looks. Okay. Bada boom. Battle complete. And let's look at CPO's army here. So this combination is not as impressive as using Boudica with CP, uh, with Lohar. Um, but my CPO is like not great here, right? So if I had the counterattack damage maxed out um, on Patient Warrior, if I had a larger army, then you would be doing a whole heck of a lot better. I, I really do think, though, because of these particular talents um, with Elixir and Counterattack, that you're better off in situations where you benefit from that healing. Against a single Barbarian like this, you're not actually receiving a lot of healing, but that would kick in in Expedition when you're like totally surrounded and you're battling four or five units and you're really pushing the difficulty with one unit trying to tank all of those armies. Pretty sweet stuff. I am going to go pla just like power through Expedition with this new concept and see how far I get. Um, and if you like these kinds of strategy videos, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm also eager to hear if you can come up with some ways to totally uh, break this rage generation and create a situation where you get such unbelievable benefits by generating those crazy insane amounts of rage. If you like this video, you should like and subscribe because we're going to do more kind of content like this. Uh, and we've got some commander guides on the way. Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.